Hello and welcome to our fourth program. And Hilly and I have just been practicing the subject of this program, which is the drop on the lob. Well, John, before we go into that, let's remind ourselves the important point of last week, which was serve and return of serve. For serve, important is open face racket and forcing your opponent into the side wall. Go back to the tee and keep eye on the ball. For the return of serve, position yourself in the middle of the back quarter, start watching the ball from the service hand to help you to get into a striking position early, Try to volley the serve. Good serves, treat with respect and play to a length down the wall across court. Bad serves, punish. In today's lesson, we will be showing you the drop shot and a lob shot. But let's start the first part with the drop shot. The drop is a very useful and delicate kill shot played just above the tin so that the ball bounces into the side wall, crack and dies. This crack we call the nick. Tactically, the best drop shot is a straight drop shot. Your position should be in the front of the court and facing the front wall. Your racket face should be open. Bend your knees for it, and the follow through should be going with the ball after striking it. So, feed yourself. That's what the aim is to get the ball close to the side wall, which gets the game more tighter for your opponent. Keep your left hand out of the way. Get the balance with it. So same position on the backhand side. There you need your right foot forward on the same basis. Bend your knees, racket face open, and trying to aim for the crack in the side wall. With a drop shot, you bring your opponent from the back of the court into the front. And especially with a straight drop, keeping tight to the wall, it makes it difficult return for your opponent. So your aim is to keep the ball close to the side wall and move your opponent from the back to the front and take a good position, go back to the tee. I got nice into the position for the ball and bend my knee and try to get the ball right close to the side wall, which is very important to put your opponent in difficult position, bring him from the back of the court, move him to the front and get him right tight to the side wall. Always remember, go with the height of the ball. Sometimes the ball could be a little bit higher, and you stay a little bit higher with it. But if the ball is low, you must bend. Go lower as far as you can with the ball. If you're standing up with a lower ball, you won't be able to hit a good drop shot. If it's a lower ball, go down more, and keep the racket face open. Like you noticed here, just now, I'm trying to play a lower ball and staying a little bit up. 
And there I made a mistake because I was not bending enough for it. You must bend if it's a lower ball. There I was nicely balanced for the ball. Because when you're playing the shot, a lot of time I notice people trying to bring their left hand in between the shot and make a mistake. So need to put the back, this hand right back. And take your position, gives you good balance to play your stroke. Now I'm going to demonstrate with three of our pupils backhand and forehand drop. So just show me how. See, when, when you're doing it, see, trying to, trying to aim for too very soft. Doesn't, yeah. Don't have to be very, very soft to when you start learning it again, you know, the drop shot. Just, you know, just play it there. I'm trying to get it more close into the sidewall. Watch this. So it forces your opponent that he cannot get a good, easy drive, you see? And go on the court on your own and practice that. And always the practice makes it perfect. Just go on the court and do that. That's very good. Okay, go get it close to the sidewall. A little bit closer to the sidewalk. So it'll force your opponent. <clears throat> nice. Just nice and relaxed. Keep, keep, keep the face of the record a little bit open, mm -hmm. you know? And bend your knee, just trying to just stay there. Like, take this position like I'm doing it now. You know, just bend there. And just nice and steady for it. Yes, nice and easy. Slowly, slowly, yeah, that's better. Doesn't matter you make a mistake, you just keep trying for it, it'll get better. Now, before we move on to the second part of the program, Let's recap the important points of the drop shot. Bend your knees. Spread your feet. Balance yourself by keeping your free arm away from the body. Racket face slightly open. Short follow through. Now I'm going to talk about my favorite shot, the lob. As you get older and slower, you'll find this shot increasingly useful. I have done so. Because what the lob does is that it gives you time. Time to recover from a bad position back to the tee. And it is a very good means of turning defense into attack. Generally, it's played as a reply to a shot that's taken you to the front of the court, i.e. a drop or a boast. And you're stretched up the front of the court and you want that time to get back again.
Right, my intention with the lob is to get Hiddy away from the tee, either right over his head or into the side wall. So he's driven into the back of the court. At the same time, it gives me time to recover my position. And even if my shot doesn't succeed in getting him to the back of the court, he's going to have to wait in the middle here for the ball to come. Whereas if I'd hit it hard at him, he would have hit the next shot much sooner, and of course I would have had less time to play his shot. The action in the shot. I'm trying to get right underneath the ball. That means I've got to bend low. I open my racket face so it's almost flat with the ground. And I'm going to try and hit that ball at the top of the bounce so I can lift it as far up that wall as possible and have a nice follow through. And obviously, the higher you hit it, the softer you need to hit it because the height will carry the ball to the back of the court. Should we try the other side? find with hitting a lob on the backhand side it is a lot easier why because if you've developed this cop wrist automatically the face is underneath the ball and lifting it up is much easier whereas on the forehand side you may have to break the wrist a little but on the backhand side it's much a much easier shot once you've developed the cocked wrist action and as a result one is much more accurate on that side. Just one last thing. My approach from the tee is almost in an arc to the ball there. So I can come nicely sideways on to the ball. Right, I'm just going to do a practice routine with the pupils on the lob. And I'll be stopping them where things are going wrong. Not deep enough. Right, what was going wrong there was they weren't getting the lob deep enough. The idea of the lob is to get it over your opponent's head on this T position to the back of the court. Theirs were all falling sh short straight onto the T position. Their opponent would have dealt with those particularly severely. Right, so what you've got to do now is try and aim higher up that wall, get underneath the ball, aim higher up onto that front wall to get the ball right back nice and deep. Hey, okay, Kazar? That's better. Still not quite deep enough. Good. Much better. Right, get down low. That's a beautiful shot. Nice balance as you play it, Philip. Okay, bad luck. Nice shot. Be oh, no answer to that one. And that's where the lob is at its most effective, when it not only goes high, it goes into the side ball, comes across, and dies in the back of the court.
Right, not far enough across that front wall. Get it further across the front wall. Good. Good. Much better. Nice height there, Philip. Very good. Not enough strength. That's a beauty. Would have been right over the T position. My fault, my fault. Okay, bad luck, just out. Okay, difficult. Shall we have a go on the other side? Right. Same thing, okay? Backhand. Good. Didn't get underneath it, get low. Get right underneath it so you can get the racket right under the ball. Bad luck. Right, a little bit hurried, a little bit hurried, Philip. The approach for this shot should be from the tee coming round onto the ball here. If you approach up the side wall, it becomes very awkward. So you've got to approach in a little arc like that. And in fact, that's how you should go back to the tee after the shot. But for this exercise, I'm asking you to come back down here so we're making room for the next person, okay? No height on that, you didn't lift it up. Make that racket head follow the ball, up, up. Okay, that's better. You're allowed to hit it on the strings though. Good. Lovely shot, lifted it right up. Get that racket face flat. Racket face parallel to the floor. Lovely. Very good, difficult shot. Okay. That was very good. We'll do some more practice tomorrow. Thank you very much. Right, let me just go through the important points of the lob again. Get down low, strike the ball well in front of you, the top of the bounce. Have a very, very open racket face so it's almost flat. And lift the ball high onto the front wall with a long follow through. And the higher you get it on that front wall, the less hard you have to hit it because the height will take the ball to the back of the court. Now John and I are gonna show you how to practice today's lesson in pairs, drop shot and lob. First of all, we'll be practicing a few lob shots and I'll be putting a boast to John and he's gonna be lobbing back to me. And then we move on into drop and lob together at the same time. Are you ready, John? Yes, sir. practicing lob shot. We're both trying to get onto the tee. So John been putting me back into the corners and getting back to the tee, and he had enough time to recover and get back to his shots again. Now we're gonna practice drop shot and lob. Enough hitting? Oh, that was hard work. <laughs> well, that was practicing from the forehand side, drop and lob together in pairs. It's one of the best practice you both can have 
practice for stamina, you drop short, getting in a habit to get back to the tee, which is very important. You've got to move onto the tee just about every shot. So we move on to the back end, cross court, drop shot, and lob. Too tight. Whoa, that was a great drop. He noticed we hit few things during the rally, but we still kept the rally on. The reason behind it, we wanted to have a longer rally. So when you're practicing this kind of shot, don't worry when you hit the tin. Keep the rally on. It's important to have the longer rally, because then you get in a habit to have a longer rally, and it helps your stamina. That's very important, because squash is a game. You've got to be strong to stay on the, in the court for a long time. So keep it up and have a longer rally. John, do you enjoy that? Very much, Hiddy, but I think it's about time we took a seat, especially you, old boy. Well, John, that was a hard work. What kind of advice we can give our friends about drinking in between the games? Yes, I think this is quite an important point, Hiddy, really. Uh, myself, I don't drink much between games. I like to do as the boxers do and uh, have a bit of a gargle and a spit, um, rinse my mouth out, and perhaps just have a sip of water. I know there are products on the market that combine glucose with salts that are meant to be assimilated into the body very quickly. Um, I've tried these with partial success. Uh, but I think one's got to be very wary of taking in a lot of liquid because it, it does have the tendency uh, to lie on top of the stomach and obviously that can lead to cramps. Uh, now we're talking about drinking actually, what, <laughs> what goes well with it is eating. For instance, before a match, Hiddy, how long before a match would you um, have a meal? I normally have uh, food which can digest easily for four to five hours before the game because it uh, helps me to play better squash if I have it that gap kind of thing. Otherwise, if I have it a little bit later, it sits on the stomach and I feel heavier on the court. And I try to have it a little bit later and have something which can digest easily. Yes. You don't really want to have food too soon before, otherwise it could end up on the court, couldn't it? Well, it can happen because uh, a lot of people try to eat it, actually, a few hours before, and it's not really advisable because it can make you ill. Right, Hiddy, thank you. That's, that's very good advice. Right, our training tip this week is court sprints. And I think Hiddy wants to say a few <coughs> words on this. Well, John, when I'm preparing for my competition, especially two weeks before, I don't go for outdoor running. As you know, in England, it rains a lot. So I spend most of the time on the court after two or two and a half hours of a hard squash. I do some court sprints, which I'm going to show you all how to do it. This really builds up stamina for me. Once again, I always mention, don't do it too much. Just build it up gradually, and then you'll get a better result. I think that just about wraps it up for this week. Next week, we're going to do that most important shot, the volley. But now let's see Hiddy get into his court sprints. Hi, John.